In this presentation, what we're looking at is how to go about amending break-even charts in a Unit 1 business exam. Now, it's worth noting that you will never be asked to draw a break-even chart, which I think is a good thing. And I know that quite a few students do worry about this particular topic, but it's not actually that difficult once you know what you're doing. So you'll never be asked to draw one. They'll always give you the graph. And what you'll be asked to do is to make some changes to that graph. And this has come up, I think, on two occasions in the past. So it could well come up again. Now, I think for this particular um, exercise, what you really need to do is to have a pencil and a ruler, and if possible, a copy of the case study. The case study we're going to be looking at is the Anya's Restaurant case study. Um, let's just open that up and see where it came from. That one was summer 2010. So if you do have a copy, put this on, on pause now and go and get your copy of the case study. If not, you can download it from the AQA website or from uh, My Learning from Moodle um, from the college um, via Lee. Okay. So try to get hold of those materials if you can. If not, then just follow this online anyway. <coughs> as it will still be useful. Okay, so let's scroll down to the particular question that we're going to look at. The question that we're going to look at will have a graph with it, because as I said, you know, um, they won't ask you to draw one, you'll just be asked to amend one. And this is the question here. Now, unlike most questions, the, the questions on the graphs tend to be um, complete in, in that you don't need to go back into the case study. All the information that you want is here. I can't guarantee that that will always be the case, but that certainly has been how it's been done up to this particular point. Now, if we look at the um, information, it says figure two shows the original weekly break-even situation for Amnius Restaurant based on her forecast. Um, however, she's realised that her fixed costs, and it's important to make to underline that or to, to make a, you know, a, a mental note of the fact that we're just looking at fixed costs here, not total costs, not variable costs, but fixed costs. Her weekly fixed costs have increased from £1,800 per week to £2,100 per week. Now, it's worth, again, just working out how much it's gone up by. It's gone up by a total of £300 per week. Now, this is actually a really, really easy thing to do um, because the first thing they ask you to do is to uh, calculate the new total cost line after the increase in fixed costs and label it TC2. Now, all that you actually have to do is move up 300 from here. So this particular point is on 1800, which corresponds with that 1800 per week there. So all that you have to do is move up 300 until you reach the 2100 point, which will be two squares above the 2000, because it's two squares for each 100. Uh, make a mark there. And then at the other end of the graph, move up 300 here and um, make another mark and then join those two lines together. So you would have a line going from approximately there, parallel with the existing total cost line, and finishing up there. And that's, that's all you're actually doing for those first two marks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through it in a little, little bit more detail um, so that you can see exactly what's going on here. But most of the things that I'm going to do now are things that you don't actually have to do in the exam if you know what you're doing. Okay, um, as I've already said, um, you know, you're going to end up with a line parallel to that one there. Um, sorry, a line parallel to that total cost line there, with each point being 300 higher. Now let's have a look at why that is. There isn't a line drawn in for you here, but there should be. And I would suggest that you draw it in for, for your own sake, so that you get, get a better idea of what's going on. This line here is your fixed cost line, which tells you that the fixed cost are £1,800 per week. It's a horizontal line because they are fixed. It doesn't change with output or it doesn't change with the number of customers. So even if they get zero customers, they still have to pay £1,800 per week. But on the other hand, if they have 200 customers, they it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. It's a fixed amount of £1,800 per week. Now, the fixed cost plus the variable costs give you total costs. So therefore, this line here is actually your variable cost line. And I've written in here fixed cost plus variable cost, which shows you that that total there comes from a combination of your fixed cost line <coughs> plus your variable cost line. 
Now for this particular question you don't have to do many, many, well you don't have to do any calculations in fact, you just have to really understand what's going on. And what's actually going on is that this fixed cost line is moving up 300 to the point 2100. So it will move up from 1800 to 2100. Let's have a look at how that will look. Okay, it's moved up from fixed cost 1 to fixed cost 2. Again, you don't have to do all this in the exam, but it might help you to understand what, what's going on. So at every single point, it's moved up by 300 because, you know, you know at the risk of labouring the point, it is fixed cost, and therefore um, it doesn't matter how many customers or, or how much you're producing, that's what you have to pay during that particular time period. So fixed costs have gone up by 300. Therefore, the starting point for your new line is here, 300 above the old fixed cost line. That's what we're really looking at. You're moving up to the new fixed cost line. And then I said, because it's going to be 300 above everywhere, it will be a line parallel with the existing total cost line. So you just move up three points here, or 300 here, which would mean moving up six squares. So basically, all you're doing is moving up six squares, two squares for each 100, moving up six squares here, two squares for each 100, and then drawing in your new line, which would be parallel to that new total cost line. And that would look like this. So that would be your new line, and that's the line, the total cost line two, they ask you to label it TC2, which gives you your two marks. Now, as I say, once you know what's going on, you probably don't need to bother drawing in a fixed cost line. I would personally do it myself, even, even though I do know what's going on, because I think it helps me to understand what's happening on the graph overall. So all that's happened is that that, that line there has shifted up. Um, it's parallel to, to the original. Your new line is parallel to the original line with a gap of 300 between each point. So that gives you your first two marks. Now the next thing, next part of the question was actually a bit daft, um, but we'll have a look at it anyway because we get two marks for it, so daft or not, uh, let, let's persevere. It says the decrease in forecast profit, you need to identify the decrease in forecast profit as a result of the increase in fixed cost based on 180 customers per week. Now the reason I say it's daft is because if fixed costs have gone up by 300 and revenue hasn't changed and variable costs haven't changed, we therefore know that profit must have gone down by 300. And it doesn't matter how much you, you how many customers you've got, your profit will be £300 less. If you look at this point here, if you had no customers, your profit is still going to be £300 less because your fixed costs have gone up by 300 and your revenue hasn't, hasn't changed. Um, and if we had 200 customers, well, again, your, your uh, fixed costs have gone up by 300 Therefore, your profit has actually gone down by 300. So it actually doesn't really matter um, what this particular number here is. It's always going to be 300. But what they want you to do is to draw a vertical line from 180 going all the way up here, cutting through these two lines, which is the original total cost line and your new total cost line, the one labelled TC2. And what they're saying is that they want you to label this section here to show the reduction in in um, profit which is the decrease in forecast profit that we're asking for here so you label that section as bc so that will look like this so a vertical line going from 180 cutting through the two lines and that section there then is labeled bc um, and that shows that your profit has fallen by 300 at that particular point as it would do anywhere else on, 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 the, um, on the chart. So if they'd asked you to do it from 100, you would have done a, a vertical line from 100, cutting through, and you would have done the same thing there, showing BC there, drop of 300. Okay, but that really is it. You know, four marks earned for drawing two lines. You just need to know that that line remains parallel to the original line because fixed costs move up 300 and nothing else has changed. Um, obviously, if variable costs have changed, then this line will, will not be parallel to the original one. If variable costs have changed, this line might be going out like that. Um, it will certainly be at a different gradient to the original line. Um, but we won't look at that in this particular case. Uh, we look at that on, on, on a different occasion. And that's it. That's your four marks.